Morning, you pallet Picassos. I got this wall done last weekend. Some of you know, I'm redoing my entire garage in pallet wood. You see, I got this trim up over here on the window. It looks pretty good. But this door is absolutely disgusting. So, I'm going to show you all how to turn pallet wood into door trim today. Yeah, so uh, let's get to that. We'll take a little before spin around the door, just for a later comparison. And then we will look at what this wall looked like before. This is what this wall looked like before. My pipe clamps look like bars on the windows. Feels like I'm in jail. The boards I'm using are 91 inches long, so I had to put up a makeshift outfeed table. These boards came from the pallet that you see me slinging around up there in the corner. They're pretty long pallets. So I had to move my planer over to my workbench. That way I would be able to run them without running into a wall. The boards I'm using are almost four and a half inches wide. I'm milling them down to three quarters of an inch because they started out around seven eighths. I'll then cut them down to around four inches wide. Now check out this makeshift outfeed table. I just uh, brad nailed a piece of scrap to my bench and clamped them down. Speaking of scrap, I gotta take all this scrap off the door. This also was pallet wood. I didn't mill it at all, I just kinda stuck it up in place. That way it would work as a makeshift door stop. The original door swung in and it was all rotted. So I replaced it with this door off my dad's tiny house we built him. And we put a regular door in there. So I got this door for free. So when I put it in, I decided I wanted it to swing out. So I had to change everything around as far as the door frame went. The old door was also a little bit taller. So I have to put this filler piece in here. That way I will have something to nail the new trim to. Nothing in my garage shop is particularly square. So I'll be doing my best to try to bring this door frame into square while I am redoing it. It's not exactly an easy task because everything is way out. You may also have noticed that I'm back in the blue uniform. This is not because I like wearing a blue uniform. It's because they changed my hours at work and... I am back to working in my shop a couple days a week, a couple hours every morning. Also, I wasn't really planning on even doing a video about a door frame. But, you know, here we are, and we're doing a video about a door frame. I thought y'all might be interested in it, so I figured I'd go ahead and set the camera up and let it roll. I'm also pretty proud of how the atmosphere in my shop is changing, just by putting this pallet wood up on the wall. See, I've always loved working in my shop and kind of considered it my man cave, but it kind of felt like a cave. It was dark and gloomy. Now it's all bright and happy. So I figured I would go ahead and share it with y'all. Maybe y'all would get a kick out of it and be a little bright and happy too. So I just used the pocket holes there to sink this into the old door frame, which is fine. I have to use pocket holes in at least one piece of every project, I think. Now you can see I've got the fillers in. Those are half inch fillers on the sides. That's to fill in where the old door used to swing into the shop. And then I'm going to tap this piece into the top that will actually be seen when everything is done little tappy tap and tappy tap again all right I think you've got it in place let's uh check it and yeah it's good quit tapping the damn board 
Okay, just a few more taps. Now it's good. So, I'm going to sink a couple of inch and a half brads just to hold this in place. I'm not using any adhesive. As a matter of fact, I just ran out of brads. I'll be right back. Oh. Anyways, I'm not using any construction adhesive or long screws or anything. I don't want the screws to be seen. I want a nice clean finish. Plus, I may actually change this door out later on with a full frame. So, I would like to be able to take all this stuff off and be able to save it. That way I could put it around the new door if I ever decide to change this one out. I've got my half inch fillers in there now. Now I have to cut the fillers that will be seen. These are going to cover up this gray area and will act as the door stop when the door closes. I don't know if you're supposed to layer boards when doing a door frame or door trim. But in my case, I have to layer them. That way I can get a nice clean look when the door is closed and when I finally get all my boards up. Now I can go ahead and cut the right side to length. This piece will be one solid piece and will go from top to bottom. I got it kind of in there. We're going to have to go back to the hammer and tap it in again. And tap it and tap it. There's a lot of tapping going on I've noticed. But once we got it all in we can use them same inch and a half brads to sink it into the door frame. Putting these fillers in I want to make sure that they are all nice and flush with my pallet wood walls. That way the trim will sit nice and flush with the door frame and the pilot wood wall and everything will be nice and clean all the way around. Now that I've got all the fillers in place I can go ahead and start marking the four inch boards at the top of the door so I know where to cut the miters at. I'm not going to measure I'm just going to mark it right at the bottom of the door frame that you're going to see. That way everything should come out nice and clean. Then we'll take that board over to the miter saw and we'll set it on top of the board for the left side. And we'll cut both boards at the same time. That way both boards are the same length and maybe I can get this store looking square anyways. See? Both boards. And because all the pallet boards on my wall have a round over on them, I'm going to throw a round over on these boards as well. It'll give a nice soft edge when you're touching my door frame. I don't know why people like to touch door frames, but I find myself touching the door frame all the time and I don't want to cut my fingers.
So I thought four inches was going to be enough to cover that gap at the top, but I was wrong. So I had to cut this inch and a half piece to cover that gap at the top. And I didn't want to just square it off, so I put a miter on either end, kind of give it a little bit of flair. You don't have to put this miter on there, but I thought it looked cool, so I did it. So down at the bottom, there is a little gap between the trim and the threshold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this leftover piece of board from where I cut at the top. And you'll see here in a second where that gap is. I'm just going to kind of cut this to make sure that it closes up any gaps so no dust or anything gets in there. The whole reason for doing this door frame is to get that nice clean look everybody wants. Let me go get my pencil. But, here's that gap I was telling you about. You see, it looks like a big hole. Not very clean looking. Now that I got my pencil, let's, uh, we'll just take a mark, and then we'll cut it off right at that mark. I like to cut them a little bit long. That way I can sneak up on it for a nice tight fit. It saves me having to measure and it ensures that it will fit nice and snug in the area in which I'm installing it. See another little tap and again we're just going to throw some inch and a half brads in it and then it'll be all done. See look at that no more gap that's what I like. That's nice and clean. So that is going to do it for this project. Got them all up. Everything's nice and clean. I even cleaned the window for you. Kind of makes me want to clean the windows on the window. But we'll see how that goes. This took about an afternoon. You can uh, go down to Lowe's or Home Depot, whatever's closest to you. And get you some project boards for about 30 bucks, I think. I used three of the four and a half and three of the three inch boards. <clears throat> I got a cleaner looking doorknob. I cut it off a little bit. It's a little on the snug side, but I wanted to pull this nice and tight. That's all I got for today, so uh, check me out next time where I build this fancy ass clamp rack and I'm going to be building some jigs for everything to go on. So if you want to see all that stuff, let me know in the comments and we'll let you see all that. Alright, subscribe, hit that notification so you can see this thing get built and uh, we'll see y'all later. Bye.